Hello, welcome to Guitars for Bars. I'm James, and today we're going to talk about this guitar. This particular guitar is an old Electra Les Paul copy, which I've had for quite a while. This is its third paint job. The first time it was just copper. The second time I painted red and yellow fire. And then this time it's obviously the stone looking skull. The first times I used PPG automotive urethanes. This time I used the PPG primer, the epoxy primer. And then I went over it with four coats of acrylic paint. This particular acrylic, the brand name is Ceramcoat by Delta. I like it. I've been using it just for regular art paintings for a long time. It's pretty durable if you put it on thick enough. So it's got four coats of that on first, and then I put the graphics on top of that. The graphics consisted of a base coat of the darker color and the lighter color, and then another coat of going back and doing all the details and making it all look good. Now, this guitar is a bolt-on. It was a bolt-on. It's no longer a bolt-on. You can see it's bolted on, it's glued on, it's permanently attached. I'm just going to coin the phrase permanent. Okay, this part here, I had to scoop that out some more because my hand didn't really fit. The, too hard to get to the fret, so you can see how I've shaped that a little bit right there. I've also rounded off some back here on this corner, on this edge, because I didn't like the way that was cutting into my hand. After painting this thing twice before, I decided to just JB Weld epoxy the studs in. So they're permanently there. They're part of the paint job. They are what they are. The cavities have already been painted with uh, shielding paint in the past, so they just got some black acrylic on them for now. Now the back, well, let's take a look at the headstock. Headstock looks kind of cool, looks like that. You go to the back, back of the headstock, same way. And then on the neck, you'll look to see it better once it's all finished. I play in, you know, if you're on stage playing in a bar, it gets dark, you can't see where you, what fret you're on. So I make these giant bright fret markers that take up a big chunk of the back of the neck. And uh, it looks cool, it's kind of, almost reptilian or something and then another modification uh the jack it's no longer there see there's a piece of wood there same way the hole the jack went through right there is gone the jack goes here now i just made one of those holes bigger uh and that's about it for the modifications now later what i'm going to do is spray some of this on it Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. I've got three cans. I'm thinking it's going to take two. Don't know if it'll take any more than that. Hopefully not, but I got three just in case. I used that stuff on a stool before, and it turned out really good. I'm just going to turn the camera so maybe you can get a good shot of what that looks like. Okay? All right. All right well, come back. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to paint this thing. We've got the neck taped up with a little handle. And move it around when I need to. We've got the holes for this pickup mount filled with toothpicks and the studs. Paper rolled up in those and I put toothpicks in the jack plate but I didn't on the back of the headstock and the reason is I usually don't give the back of the headstock very many coats as many as the front and the back because the tuning keys go on there and that's it. And I don't like to have a big gob of clear between the tuning keys and the headstock. So I try to keep the headstock a little bit thinner, except I like to build up on the corners. So I've got my exhaust fan going already. I've got my mask on. And spray some paint.
All right, that's good enough for the first coat. It's just a tack coat. It's going to get this can, this can, and maybe another can. We'll see how far, how far it goes. All right, we'll be back. All right, we're back. First coat is dry to the touch, so I'm going to do the second coat. I added another brighter light, and we're going to do things a little different this time. I, uh, you see the problems you have when you got one that the neck's already on. I think that's why the kit companies tell you to, to paint the neck and the body separate, then glue them together, because you really got to have some kind of decent setup to do that. Now, there's Carvin's got a video of their custom shop, and they've got a contraption there that holds a guitar, and I think I'm going to build one of those for the next one. Okay, that's the second coat. Now this stuff dries really fast. In five minutes, I'll be able to touch it. So I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm going to finish coating it and coating it and coating it. And then we'll continue on with once it's all coated. Bye bye. All right, the last coat is on there. You can see what it looks like. It's still kind of shiny. It's going to get more matte as it goes, as it dries out. We're going to leave this hang out here for a couple days. And then we're going to come back and take a look at it because I know there's a few little things sticking out of the paint here and there. I'm going to sand those off and then give the top one more thin coat and the back another thin coat. And we'll tape off everything else so it doesn't get any paint. All right, there you go. You can see it's not smooth like glass. This one's not going to be. I do not recommend this for any guitars of value, doing a, doing a paint job like this. This just looks cool. Won't hold up for very long because of the materials, but it does look cool. So 